So did anybody notice we changed clothes during that uh, from the first segment to this segment? Yeah. Car- Kevin is very messy. Yeah. <laughs> I spill coffee. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but uh, hey, glad to be here and glad to have you with us once again for Exiles TV. Little, 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 we had a little bit of a tech glitch that we were uh, working out, but uh, we are with you. The Weezit was not connecting with the Framistat properly, and it caused all of that high RF interflux problems. Hey, how, how, do you ever feel like technology just doesn't like you? I, I've, I've had that feeling lately, where, and it seems like it always comes in clusters with me. Right now, my computer, I've got a problem with my computer that um, it will just reboot spontaneously. Mm-hmm. I'll be in the middle of something and it'll just pff, reboot. So, of course, save early, save often. Now, my DVR at home, my Cox DVR is acting stupid. Uh, one of my favorite programs, one-hour program, and Cox DVR only recorded 21 minutes of it. Lovely. Um, you know, and, and yes, I'm mentioning you by name. Make it right. Uh, I, I'm kidding, because... Of uh, all the I, services, I, I think they have the most uh, if appropriate I, name. If I bring that set-top box over, they'll give me another one without any question. No No, they're, they're good about that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's just, I, I feel like I'm one of those people that, you know, my phone has been acting crazy lately. I, you know, I, I'm cursed with, with well, electronics. I mean, you know, it, like me, now I just got a new one, so it doesn't apply to me anymore. But, I mean, Alexander Graham Bell held my old phone in his hand. He was that old. You know, so, I, you, I, I just, I think most of the people that are involved in creating new technology rush it to the market and it still has a lot of bugs in it. I, I, don't, I don't think there's... We have talked about this before. One of, one of my favorite products to talk about is Microsoft Windows. A product that they rush to the market knowing it's flawed. Yeah. Knowing that you're, if you're one of the first people to buy. And these things, iPhones, they know damn well that the first one, you know, whether it's you're the first person to own a 6 or an iPhone 10 or an iPhone 11 or whatever, that you're going to have issues with it. Well, but that's okay. Well, you know, there'll be patches. My brand new iPhone 11, which is a marvel of technology, you know how you've got the little app for notes, things that you want to put on a page and they're stored and, and remember? Yeah. So... I think this thing, I got it at the end of February. It has had four updates since the end of February. And on the last one, it just wiped out a note that had all my travel information, like all my, all my travel club numbers, you know, all my, all my mileage accumulation number, my Hertz number one gold number, my budget fast track number. It just took it away. Now, it's of no use to anybody because I don't, I'm not stupid. I don't put the passwords in next to the account numbers, but all of those, I mean, nine hotel chains, four rental car companies, five airlines, uh, six dining clubs. I'm telling you, man, we got to go back to the days where you have a folded up piece of paper in your wallet. <laughs> I used to do that. Yeah. I mean, but my wife not made likely fun to of lose, me. Not likely to lose, the, but that's because like me, your wallet's like that thick um, and none of it's money. That's, <laughs> that's how it is with me. Uh, but, you know, they have technology. Um, I don't know what it is. And, and, you know, is it possible that a person can affect technology, that your bioelectric field can well, you know, I, blah, blah, blah? Well, yeah, I mean, you can. I, I knew somebody that an automatic door opener at the supermarket would not open for him. It just wouldn't. Good judge of character? Could be. <laughs> but you know, like, there's people that have uh, chemicals in their bodies, you know, uh, uh, compounds. I mean, Dope. you have copper so what in you're your talking about? No, you have copper in your body naturally. <laughs> you know, you get too much of it, things start happening badly to you. Uh-huh. Uh, but I, 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 think, I think that technology is an equal opportunity annoyer. But it does come in clusters, mm-hmm. in absolute clusters. Hey, yeah. we are probably in the entire listening area here, in for some more of that severe weather that we saw yesterday. Um, it is coming. Uh, it is coming uh, uh, from the south, from the Gulf area, uh, between Lake Charles and Lafayette, and moving at the northeast, just like it did yesterday. Uh, be aware of 
possible f flash flooding, some tornado watches or warnings everywhere from Acadiana through Baton Rouge into the Florida parishes, and then Homa Thibodeau, New Orleans, there's a separate cell that you're going to see during the day as well. So uh, it's, it was beautifully sunny this morning at about 7.30 in Baton Rouge, and now uh, you can see the rain clouds gathering. Mm -hmm. So wherever you are viewing us, uh, from the Lafayette area all the way to the Mississippi border, both north and east, chances are good you are going to get some heavy weather today or at least a threat of heavy weather that will have you watching the sky. So, so hunker. Yeah. Hunker. I, I, by the way, maybe we ought to ask the audience if we've got time. Did the emergency alerts go off in your area Yesterday? In a timely fashion, yesterday in the early morning when they had confirmed tornadoes. And yesterday afternoon and as well. And yesterday afternoon. Did they, yes. did they go off in a timely fashion? I, mine did as far as I'm concerned. Ours didn't. Mm. Twice in a row. Not, not in the early morning and not in the afternoon. We're uh, here on our first commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about COVID-19, but from a different angle. This is a sportsman's channel, largely. A lot of sports programming on this channel. We're going to be joined by a sports writer extraordinaire, Glenn Gilbo. We're going to talk about COVID-19 amongst LSU uh, players. We're going to talk about what the virus may mean for fall sports, football, pro, prep, college. What's it going to look like this fall? That's coming up next when Exiles TV returns. Treasurer John Schroeder, encouraging you to visit latreasury.com to search for your unclaimed property money. During this pandemic, we've returned money to businesses, local governments, and people across Louisiana. New Orleans Habitat for Humanity found unclaimed property with the Louisiana Treasury. Audubon Nature Institute has unclaimed property. I found unclaimed property with the Louisiana Department of Treasury. We still have over $800 million. This is your money. Claim it. Sorry, was that racially I know insensitive? how. <laughs> Welcome back, Exiles TV. I'm Kevin, he's Bill, and uh, joining us, we're going to talk about the face of sports as we go into the fall of COVID-19. Uh, this is going to be, uh, 2020 is uh, going to go into history books as one of the strangest years on record. Oh my God, we just, uh, Stephen Wagaspak said we need to find God's keyboard and hit control, alt, delete, <laughs> and just start all over. Uh, please welcome sports writer Glenn Gilbo with, can I, did I get that right? Yeah, USA can, Today Network. The USA Today Network is, is the right way to say it, but uh, we appreciate you being with us. Thank you. we got a situation right now where we don't know exactly how many players on the LSU squad have tested positive, but we do know some 30 have been quarantined. At least 30. This forces people to ask themselves, is there going to be a football season and what might it look like? Well, I, I think, um, you know, overall people like 
the age of LSU football players and college football players, they're not going to be sick, but for a couple of days, they'll be okay. Uh, but obviously, that's not the point. You know, if they spread it to coaches on LSU staff or people around town that are, are more susceptible to being really uh, sick from COVID, uh, so they've been. That's why they were quarantined. But to answer your question, I, I think uh, you know, I, I think there's still going to be football, but. I don't think, obviously, it's going to be full stadiums, you know, maybe 25% to 50%. I, I think it ought to be less than 25% at the stadium, really. They can still recoup money with TV, but I don't think it's a good idea to have thousands of people in a football stadium this fall. The, uh, what are the governing authorities saying? Are they, are, are they keeping their counsel right now until they see what happens? Let's start with the NCAA. You know, you see the news and MLB and the NBA and the NFL, it's clear that their governing bodies are in control. You don't see that from the NCAA. It's, it's like everybody's out there on their own. There's, you know, and there are more teams and schools, obviously, than, than there are in the NBA, NHL, Major League Baseball. But uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of uniformity in, in the NCAA. Uh, concerning the virus and when to come back. You know, everybody kind of did it on their, is doing it on their own. Almost. Are they, are, is the NCAA looking for the individual conferences to come up with policy or? You know, I, I don't really know. The NCAA just seems to be not really doing a lot. Uh, I, I think it, it, the NCAA in college football and basketball, it is different than the pro sports in that the individual conferences you know, there's not individual conferences like in the NFL and MLB, mm -hmm. really. There's not, not offices and so forth as there is in college. So it, it is being sort of left up to the to the conferences. Mm -hmm. well, and but they, they need some uniformity and to, and to get it together. They're, they're moving toward that a little bit. But, uh, you know, I mean, you know, they're talking about how some non-conference games might not be played. Uh, you know, well, that really hurts that conference, you know. So... Uh, like you know, LSU has a, sun, a game against a Sun Belt school, and they're not that hurts playing. That that. Sun Belt yeah, that hurts the Sun Belt big time. Yeah, so I'm not sure how they're going to do that. Well, and you, you've got some uh, some fairly decent programs that are in areas where they've had almost no COVID. University of Wyoming comes to to right. mind. Right. Uh, I, I don't think the Cheyenne area. That's where they are, right? I don't, um, or Laramie. I'm not sure. But I don't think they've had more than 25 or 30 COVID cases. Right. They're right. saying, we're past this, we can play, but who's going to come? And what are they bringing with them? Right, exactly. Exactly, yeah. It's, uh, you know, I, I mean, the LSU people keep saying they're, they're, they're going to play, you know, all their games. Interesting. But when you talk about, you know, possibly running a stadium at, at decreased capacity, who do you tell they can't come to the game? I mean, what, do you just curtail the number of, of bought tickets per game and let the season ticket holders in? What about the student tickets? You know, I mean, who who who, who picks the winners and losers? Here? I don't know. You know, it's a lot of refunds for those those people that don't come. Um, I, I would think, you know, the, the people that uh, are in the suites, the people that pay the most money to the to, to the Tiger Athletic Foundation. I would think, if you're only going to have a, a small number of people, I would think they would have first dibs, but. Uh, you know, it's 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 a mess to, to figure that out when you start picking who can go and who can't. Well, and you know, it's going to be the newest hire in the LSU ticket office who gets to make the phone call and says, "Mr. Gallagher, uh, we're not selling you your season tickets this year." <laughs> you know, that that's who it's going to be. And then let the smoke pour out of the, that season ticket holder's ears. Well, and, and what? you got a lot of money involved here. Could be, I mean, maybe you could have a rotation basis. These season ticket holders from this section. Go to a these lottery. three games. <laughs> these, this section goes to these. You know who gets yeah. to go to the Alabama game? Yeah, you know? you know, bargain to at least you know, so that at least they get some of the season. But we, we are talking huge money. You know, they may refund the ticket price if you can't sit in your seats because of separation. But it's not up to the university to rebate the TAF fee. Are they willing to do that? Well, you know, how I mean, do they calculate? How many dollars, millions of dollars in concessions and spend-alongs are not going to happen at that stadium in every home game? And how do they compensate for that? And what really happens if LSU football goes into the red for the first time in history? Well, I, 
they could recoup it pretty quickly uh, if there's no virus in the 2021 season. Um, they've been in the red before, but uh, not football alone. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, I mean, this is new ground for, for everyone, and, and the, the most important priority is, is not spreading the virus, which we've already messed that up, you know. I mean, we had, we had curtailed the spread of it until only recently. Well, you know, and, and I agree with you that as a human being, uh, the most important priority is not spreading the virus. Uh, I, would, I would say that there's a fair amount of people, uh, because this is a huge multi-hundred million dollar business, whose top priority is keeping that multi-hundred million dollar business and the contributions that come in from starstruck fans on track. They, yeah. Their priorities might be a little different from yours and mine. Yeah, and maybe they think, oh, well, you're going to get sick anyway, you know. So might as well open everything up. I mean, I've, I've heard that. I, uh, but to me, it's, it's like, do you, do you put the clamps down cold turkey and try to stop it as much as you can, the spread of it as much as you can now? Or do you relax it and just let it run its course and then you could be dealing with this for years instead of maybe a year? Well... Well, and, we may be dealing with the virus for years because viruses don't just magically disappear. They're well, still I mean, out there. I mean, a pandemic. Yeah, they're I mean. still yeah. out there somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now that it's here, I get the feeling it's going to be here. Maybe become part of our seasonal, sure, you know, flu situation. But uh, I know it's not a flu virus. But um, but how long will it be a pandemic? Yeah, exactly. How long will we have to you know how long, take precautions against mass cases? Well, how long before we know if the antibodies do provide you with uh, immunity? And how long before we get an actual tested virus that works? I mean, a, a, a tested vaccine that works. Do, do you think, Glenn, that it's at all realistic to expect sixty thousand people to wear a mask for three hours? Sixty? Try ninety-six. 000. Well, I'm going. I'm going conservative. Uh, right. I mean, I, I, I agree with Scott Woodward, the LSU athletic director. He, he said they're considering requiring fans who go to the games to to wear a mask. And uh, I mean. It's not that hard to wear a mask. I'll For three it, hours? Keep... Well, I mean. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> then don't go to the game. I, 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 get, I get antsy in that mask after 15 well, minutes. No, it's I, like we're a, spoiled, we're a spoiled nation. But here's the whole thing. The LSU fan who won't wear it, wear it for 10 minutes at the Walgreens will wear it for 35 days if you tell him that's his entree to get into an LSU football game. Let's be honest about this. I'm sure they'll come up with some kind of way to attach a flask to the inside of the mask without seeing it. Yeah. A mini flask that you can attach booze. to the roof of your mouth. All right, with that, we're going to take another quick commercial pause, and we will be right back with Glenn Gilbo on Exiles TV. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Hi, gang. Clarence Bugs here. Some big changes are coming to the Pelican and Cox Cable. July 15th, our numbers are changing. We're easier to find and we're in high def. New Orleans, Gramercy, Lutcher, Acadiana, Patterson, Baton Rouge, new numbers coming and a brand new signal. It all happens July 15th on Cox Cable. Do your buddy Clarence a favor, will you? Get all the details by checking your local guide. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugé Jr. and I am a general dentist at Frugé Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. 
We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUG. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original cell vent. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Welcome back to Exiles TV. Glad to have you with us. We were talking about the future of sporting events from a, a fan perspective. Our guest, Glenn Gilbo, uh, he is uh, with the USA Today uh, Network. Uh, and he is a very, very, I would say, a very well-read, very eminent sports writer. You've been doing this a day or two. You know what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, if you don't mind us shifting gears, uh, there is a book that's in, 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 in production that you're a very big part of. Uh, about uh, Skip Bertman. Uh, what, uh, tell, tell us what you can about the book and, and, uh, and when we're going to see it. Hopefully it, it'll be out by this time uh, next year. Uh, it's just uh, everything matters, the Skip Bertman story. Um, he, everybody knows about his uh, baseball coaching career, won five national championships, but he was also a remarkable athletic director at LSU who hired four coaches who won national championships, Les Miles and Paul Maneri, two of them. Uh, so there's a lot there, and he, and he was, uh, he did a lot before he got to LSU in 1983, and, and uh, I've been spending the last couple of years interviewing a lot of his players and so forth, and, and uh, that leads to other stories I didn't know about, so uh, hopefully it'll all be in. It's going to be a large book. <laughs> LSU was not large. a baseball school before Skip Bergman. No. Uh, no, it and, was not. And there were uh, there were a lot of big supporters. Uh, I can think of one. I don't think he'd mind me saying it. Charlie Jagostino. Yes. Who who ran the business incubator uh, and did great things there up until his retirement a year or so ago. But he basically took Skip Bertman everywhere and said, "You got to get behind this guy. You got to support this guy. He needs new facilities. He needs you know publicity." And Skip had the skill with these few alumni that were well-to-do and were baseball fans to take that program from here to here in about two seasons. Right, yeah, I interviewed Charlie at his house uh, last week. He's one of Skip's oldest friends, mm -hmm. Richard Lipsy as well, who really helped him uh, get, get the ball rolling. You know, Skip must, must have given 85 speeches in his, in his first year to various businesses you know he'd show up in his baseball uniform uh, I mean he he really did a lot on his own uh, Charlie an interesting story that will be in the book Charlie you know was in construction with his mm -hmm. and building with his brother RJ in, in Baton Rouge at the time Skip came in and Skip didn't always follow the procedure of, of LSU which oh, is no. a, that's no. a lot of bureau, bureaucratic red tape and uh, and Charlie built Skip a new office in, at the old Alex Box in about a second or third year as coach. And, and, and one day, uh, one of the LSU officials happened to be driving down the street. <laughs> what is this? Where did this come from? You know, so, so that's kind of how things happened. And, and he, Skip just did things. He got things done because he knew how to do it. Well, Skip was always one of the uh, major proponents, and, and he was such a great storyteller. His, uh, his daughter Jan worked for me in my public relations business when they first got here. But he was always the guy that said, it's always better to ask for forgiveness than it is for permission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, and his players remember uh, so much of what he said uh, and, and, and see him as much, much more than a coach. 
Well, this is a biography, so how early do you start with the Skip Bergman story? I mean, how far back do we go? Well, uh, I'm thinking probably right before he came to LSU, there was, a, there was another book, Skip Bergman, The Man in the System, done by Bruce Hunter from mm -hmm. The Advocate after he won the first national championship in 91 that kind of did a lot of his Miami days and mm -hmm. his days as a kid. I'm going to touch on some of that, but we're not going to get into that as much as we the main thing is going to be him at LSU and, and, and a little bit about how he came to LSU from, from Miami because he thought he was going to be the Miami coach, but then LSU arrived. But we're not going all the way back to the beginning. No. We are at, at the beginning at, at LSU. He, as you pointed out, he did a lot more in Baton Rouge and the state of Louisiana than just baseball. But I don't think I've ever met a more baseball guy than Skip Bergman. It's true that when he was the head coach, he called every pitch, isn't it? It's yeah, he, yeah. In his, in his last season, he, he gave a little bit of that to, to Dan Canterbury, his pitching coach. But for the most part, yeah, he was in total control of the game. Called the pitches at times, you know, set where the, where the infielders were. Uh, and he knew so much about pitching, he could help LSU's hitters versus uh, the other pitcher. But, and, and, uh, and when he got a guy like Chad Oje, by the time Chad Oje was in his last year at LSU, Chad knew the, the call that was coming from Skip. He, was, he really taught LSU pitchers how to think as pitchers, not necessarily how to throw a slider or a fork, fork ball or something, but, but you know, when to throw a pitch and just how to pitch in, in the mind. How to read the hitter, et cetera, et cetera. Sure, sure. And, and you know, they, he studied video. I mean, his team was always better prepared uh, than the other team. Was it hard to be an assistant coach under Skip Bertman? It seems oh, yeah. like you don't have much to do. Skip's doing it all. Oh, no, he, he found stuff for you to do. It wasn't always baseball-oriented. Jim Wells uh, from, from Shreveport was an assistant G, uh, GA for LSU under Skip before becoming a great coach at, at Northwestern State in Alabama. And, uh, you know, one of the first things he did was go get a load of dirt. <laughs> You know, <laughs> Skip knew how to put people to work. Between second and first. Yeah. Kind of and and, and, and uh, Randy Davis, who used to work for Skip, too, they were playing a, a, a midweek game against a non-conference opponent, and uh, and Skip says, oh, Jim, Randy, you're not in the dugout this game. Y'all need to be in the uh, in, in my office typing up my uh, my book. He did a, a, a baseball uh, coaching book, mm -hmm. Skip did, and, and, and his coaches typed it up. <laughs> Skip's skills with working with a team also translated, though, to being able to apply those same talents to working with people that invest in the school, and oh, you know, doing you know, making no business deals. And I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody become a, for lack of a better term, an AD emeritus at a university. Yeah, he, he was a businessman. There was, there was no question. In, in addition to, uh, to being a great coach and, and pitching. Expert uh, players said that a lot of times, you know, the assistants would start practice because Skip was was making a speech or raising money or something. And he'd come to practice in a coat and tie, and actually sometimes go onto the field with with the coat or maybe the the shirt still on and, and go over basics. But but yeah, he, he's got an excellent uh, business sense. I mean, his his camps, he, his salary was only about thirty thousand when he started at LSU. He made most of his money on the camps. And, and he was brilliant at, at, at the camps. You know, he would, he would put them in hotel rooms at a nice rate because hotel rooms were empty in Baton Rouge at the time. And he'd have camps over Christmas. And, and Dale Brown and the other coaches were like, wow, I need to start doing this with my camp. Mm -hmm. you know, and they would ask him for advice on that. So, and, and he used that business sense and just common sense, really, uh, to gr great benefit for LSU when he became uh, athletic director. Well, I, what do you think? What do you think of, of Skip's legacy of taking a program that, quite frankly, nobody noticed? I mean, basketball wasn't exactly a big hit then, no. but, but everybody in Baton Rouge knew we had a basketball team. Nobody knew we had a baseball team. Right. Well, there's a lot of good comparisons between Skip and Dale. Uh, Dale Brown came into uh, LSU in 1972 two and basketball was awful but it had Pete Maravich just a few years yes. before and it mm -hmm. had Bob Pettit so it had had some sex some success uh, and maybe it had had sex maybe there was sex, sex too, too. Yeah, they might have <laughs> <had some> sex. <laughs> uh, 
right, let, let's uh, roll that. Uh, but uh, now That's baseball, okay. We'll take that out in post. <laughs> but, and, and, you know, when Pete Maravich was there, you know, it was, it was quite a, an, an event and a happening. Now, the LSU baseball program, they had some good seasons before Skip, but hardly anybody ever went to the games. You know, like, like Skip talks about how you, you could hear the players' cleats when you were sitting in the stands because he went to some games before he was coach mm -hmm. to look at the program. And, uh, and I remember going to games when I was a freshman in 79, 80, a couple of years before Skip came, and there was, there was nobody at the, uh, at the games, and the locker rooms were awful. So, you know, and, and the, some of the first things that, in, in addition to the coaches, like I told you, Jim Wells went and got a load of dirt. Uh, the players, one of the, some of the first things they did was, was uh, hammer boards and repair dugouts and paint. You know, so he literally uh, did it from the ground up, and, and in just a couple of years, he was he was in Omaha in 1986. So it's amazing how fast he worked and how much he had to do. And how he made the program worthy of well, basically a brand new stadium being built. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes, uh, and he never got to coach in that because uh, he, he retired. But as athletic director, he he made sure that happened, and and uh, you know it was it's a state of the art. Stadium. It opened in, in 2009. It's it's a great stadium. A lot of people still miss uh, the old box, but but the new box is, oh, is it's beautiful. Good. It's really the old a, box a had character. It, it had did. character. It did. New place is a great place to watch a ball. Yeah, game. it is. The yeah. concourse you got to have. Any idea? Because he's kind of modest about this. How many people, both at other universities and in the pros, did he turn down during his time at LSU? Well, I don't I don't know. You know, baseball is a little different. You don't see college baseball coaches make the jump to become an MLB manager like you do college basketball coaches go to the NBA and college football coaches go to the NFL. And a lot of them go the other so, way, like Eddie Stanky with the White Sox came from University. That's right. Uh, went from the White Sox to University of Alabama. South Alabama, South right, Alabama. in Mobile. Yeah, yeah. He was he was one of the very good early college baseball coaches before Skip. Um, but I mean, I'm sure. If Skip could have been like a pitching coach in Major League Baseball, or maybe, and then worked his way into being a manager. But he he never he was never interested in that. But it but it is funny. I mean, he put so many players into pro ball, into the major leagues, and those guys like like Paul Bird and who was a pitcher, and Chad OJ who was a pitcher in, in Major League Baseball. They all say that he could have been a great baseball manager, and they still see him as good or better than any manager they ever played for in MLB. We are talking to Glenn Gilbo. Uh, the book, uh, what is the title of the book? Uh, Everything Matters, the Skip Burtman story. All right, we're going we're gonna to come back around after this next break and, and, again, recap what the sports writers and people who follow very closely think is going to happen with sports in this fall at all levels. Right after we take this break, you are watching Exiles TV on the Pelican. Very glad to have you with us back in a moment. That's right, the Clarence Bug Show is back, along with the exiles, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher. We put the band back together, South Louisiana's talk team, and it's only on the Pelican. 10 a.m. till 12 noon, right here on the Pelican. No! the feeling. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent with nationwide buying power. 
Hi, I'm Bobby Yarbrough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Exiles from what you ask, exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Pafita, he's Kevin Gallagher, and they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. We're back. It's Exiles TV. Bill Perfito over there. Kevin Gallagher over here. And in the center chair you know is what? Glenn Gilbo. This razor doesn't work. It, it, it really doesn't. I like that razor so much I bought the company. <laughs> what was that guy's name? I don't know. Remington he, Victor Kayam. Yeah, Victor Kayam. Yeah. yeah, he he was the owner of the Patriots at one time. Well, he yeah. was? Yeah, he was the guy before the present guy. Before the, the massage parlor guy. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> this guy always rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> That's funny. I see what you did there. <laughs> so getting back to our original topic, COVID-19 is probably, it certainly appears to me like we're not going to be like all clear. Uh. Everybody have fun tonight when, when fall football season rolls around. Um, just speculating, what do, you, what do you see with pro sports? What do you see with you know uh, prep football? Prep football may be the biggest risk. Yeah, and... Uh you know they they thought that they had um, kind of were making progress as well like like everybody else and then they had a rash of of uh, tests positive tests and so forth but I, I mean I, I think the again the NFL is is more organized than than the NCA fewer fewer teams and I mean I, I think they're going to play but I, but I think it's not going to be full stadiums. Uh, Major League Baseball has set their 60-game regular season. College basketball is playing is going to play in a bubble in uh, in Orlando. Uh, so you know we're going to we're going to have sports. It's just going to look different, and I don't think there's going to be as many fans in the stands. The one place though that it, that it, it, I, I'm thinking about is on the field. You can't practice social distancing, and you, especially at the line of scrimmage, you're going to have a whole bunch of guys breathing and right 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 in each other's face. You suppose there's any way they could add filtration to the helmet, or oh dear God! Well, again, well, I mean, what I mean, what do you do? I, you know, I, they're going to play. I mean, I I, I don't know. Uh, now, it, it is young people as far as the college game. They're hardy. They may not get as right. sick if they they're, get they're, sick. They're not going to get as sick, and they and they may have already had it in LSU's case. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I mean, it's it's going to happen. You know, there's going to be a player 
that, that gets it the week of a game or, or the day before a game or there's going to be a rash of players that, that get it on a team. I mean, I think the NFL and college should expand the rosters uh, so that if you do have a rash of, of cases during a game, you're not so limited roster-wise, especially the NFL because they only, you know, they, they, they don't have nearly as many players available for a given game as, well, as college does. I think with the NFL and to a lesser extent with the NCAA, you can take everyone on your team and say, say goodbye to your wife and your kids. You're going to football for camp. For 18 weeks. Because <laughs> you're going to live in this hotel. You're not going to leave. Your meals are going to come in. You're going to go to the game. But those refs travel. Mm -hmm. So the ref, while he may test negative, the morning of the game may be carrying it. And he came in on an airplane. So even if he isolated for 14 days... He was on that airplane, and that's going to be your weak link. Well, they can social distance better than a, than a player, but yeah. still, but I, I just, that has its limits. There's so much money riding on it, especially with pro football. I just don't see anybody saying no season this year. Well, yeah, and, and if there wasn't as much money, they probably would cancel the seasons. Mm -hmm. you know? But I mean, with no, with, with well, with less, much less money, do you see maybe some schools saying no football season this year? Just, just, just bowing out on their own. Yeah, yeah because we're I, talking about children's health here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I could see that happening. Uh, a school, but, but you know, even the small football schools, they still make the money to pay for their other sports. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't know. I, 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 that hasn't happened yet. Now, you have had some some schools that have canceled programs. Like, you know, you've had some small schools like Bowling Green just got rid of the baseball program because of financial loss. Altogether. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, or at least for now. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, at the moment, it's 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 forever. They, I guess they could bring it back. But that that's happened to some small schools. But you got a lot of moving parts. I mean, you can't have a halftime show at an NFL game. You know, because the people come in are different every week. You don't know where they've been. You don't know what they've touched. You don't sure, know who's sick. Sure. So you're not going to have a halftime show. I would imagine probably for a Saints home game, there's probably six or 700 press credentials issued. I would imagine that people in your field are going to have to hustle for press credentials because they're probably going to cut those by 50%. Well, you know, um, again, they can – they can keep you pretty quarantined in the in the press box, uh, and it's not quite that many for a regular season game. And if you get rid of the hangers on, it's even it's even less the people that are actually working. But um, you know, when you're indoors, you're in the in the press box. You can, you know, I, I plan on wearing a mask at the at the games. Um, you're not going to be going down for interviews as usual. You're going to be get them, getting them off video. I've already discussed that with some LSU officials. I mean, it's going to be drastically different, but as, as a fan, I, I don't see why you would want to go to the game. <laughs> I mean, really, even if you have season tickets. No, I, I feel I mean, you. Because you I mean, because I would, I would, television is always a better yeah, experience. Yeah, I mean, well, why, why risk it, you know? I, I don't. I don't get that. I, I, well, it's just too difficult to go to a game this year. My wife said at the beginning of this, we're going to find out what we can live without. Yeah. And yeah. I would, if I were a big time college football program, I want to find a way where I can pack the seats because if you say no, no spectators are very limited. Chances are you're going to lose forever. About twenty five percent of that. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh yeah, I, I think I think they'll come back. I Look mean, with the they've come back during uh, when other sports had you know went on strike and it was not nearly as understandable as as a virus, and they still came back to baseball. Uh, you know, the '94 strike they came back in '98. So I think if college football has games with hardly any fans this year. I think they'll come back with a vengeance next year. Well, you I, just made me think of another question. I wouldn't want to take that risk if it were me. Right well, now, with you the, have to. the MLB, we're seeing that some teams are saying, or team managers and owners are saying, well, we're ready to, you know, to, to, to think about you know, Major League Baseball, but some of the players are going, yeah, well, we're not. I know, I know. So what do you, what do, you do there where the owner's saying, you know, take me out to the ball game, and you're saying, I'll just stay home and watch some more Netflix. Exactly. Well, MLB, the, the owners have some kind of right where they can just order the season to start, which is, I think, what we're going to see happen. Uh, and, 
you know, the – but I think some players, I mean, you know, players, if, if, they, if even if the season does come back, I mean, I could see players saying, well, I'm not playing this year. You know, well, of course, they won't get paid. But, yeah, they won't get paid. See, that, that's know. the big hook. But it also is a – constitutes a contract violation, right? Yeah. So then they get sued. You don't get many sick days when you're in Major League Baseball. Yeah. But it wouldn't be a regular contract uh, argument, you know, because there are extenuating circumstances. But but it's going to be interesting to see what, what happens. And, and, you know, it's it's difficult to do stories on this as a reporter because you're interviewing people who don't really know. So it's the blind leading the blind. I mean, no, nobody really knows what's going to happen or how it's going to look. What? If you don't want a personal professional question. What has it been like not having sports to report? But yet you've got deadlines and you've got an editor saying, hey, Glenn, I want, you know, X amount of column inches and there's nothing going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, this is a time I take a lot of vacation anyway. <laughs> Plus, uh, USA Today Network wide, we, we had uh, furloughs mm -hmm. one week a month for three months, uh, April, May and June. So between the furloughs and my vacation, I haven't been working as as much as as usual but when i have been been working this there's, there's things that that come up uh you know the uh with with the lsu football team they have zoom teleconferences the saints have zoom teleconferences it's all, it's all on the phone so so there have been stories to do but it's not a constant thing like when the season's mm -hmm. going on uh but uh you know there, there's this recruiting is still going on you mm -hmm. know lsu recruiting uh, it, it's still very much going on because uh, a lot of that is is on the phone. So there's still there's still quite a few stories, but you know if you look at the advocate each morning, it's obviously much smaller than it usually is. It's yes. like four pages a day, mm -hmm. which is, which is very much smaller. And and you know the the uh, and and USA Today Network uh, also smaller, but they have a wide range of choices, you know, being in a network with, with hundreds of papers that they can still fill it up and fill up, fill up the website when there's nothing going on. But it is, you know, it's, it's it, a, a boredom issue. <laughs> it's definitely there. There's only, only so many stories you can do about what the baseball team did 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that, that gets old a little, games that they, yeah. And I, the advocates done a lot of that and that gets old after a while. Before we wrap it up, I, I want to ask you a, a question about the psychological impact. We're doing our very best with the best intentions to sterilize high-level collegiate sports and professional sports. I mean, I, I, I heard yesterday that one of the things MLB agreed to was a relief pitcher has got to face at least, at least three batters. I mean, there are some situations and some relievers, you come in, you only want to throw one pitch and then pull them out. But when it all comes to the field and we have sterilized it to the best of our ability, is it going to feel to you as a sports writer, to me as a spectator, that the sport has really changed because of this? Um, I don't think so. When, when, you're, when you're watching the game on TV, I don't think you, you're going to notice, you know. I mean, I, baseball, basketball, or anything. You you won't you won't really notice that it's different. Uh, it is going to be fun when they when they restart the games in Major League Baseball and the NBA because I think they're going to get an overload of viewers. I think they're oh, going to get yeah. people that would not ordinarily not have watched. You just it. want to see. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Plus, you want to see anything that's live. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it, it's going to be it's going to be wild when it does come back. Glenn Gilbo is a, a featured sports writer with the USA Today Network and uh, uh, has been a very good friend to our programming over the last couple of days, filling us all in on what sports might look like in the COVID-19 world. And we're going to have to have you back again, Glenn. Thank you so much for being with thank us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Let's you. take a quick break, and we will be back. Exiles TV, thanks for watching. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUG. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvat. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. No!
It's the feeling. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Clarence Bug Show. Yeah, I'm back on the air. That's right, 10 a.m. until 12 noon, Monday and Wednesday, and we replay it Monday and Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. to midnight. Check us out online. You can watch it live at pelicansportstv.com, or better yet, why don't you just download the Pelican Broadcasting app? That way you can take it with you anywhere you go. That's right, the Clarence Bug Show. Tell you what. Oh, wait, got to run. Got to go. Bye. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Welcome back to Exile TV. Glad Welcome. to have you with us. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How about you? We should do different languages when we come back, you know? Well, I don't speak any different. I mean, I, well, I remember about that much French from junior high school. A, there's a personal <laughs> improvement project for you. Welcome. Bienvenue. Exactly. Welcome. Yeah, you come saw, on in. You saw Blazing Sands. Exactly. There you That's go. <laughs> I, can you admit that you saw Blazing Saddles and laughed? Uh, uh, yes. Or will somebody be taking no, down yeah, statues yeah, you're right, of Kevin exactly. Gallagher? Blazing Saddles is a horrible, terrible movie. It's a horrible, horrible film. That's the funniest movie ever. Uh, if it were a statue, we'd turn it, we'd tear it down and set it on fire. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I learned a little. I, I took three years of French when I was in what we call middle school here in the Deep South. In middle school? Middle school, junior high. Seventh, eighth, and ninth? Uh, or and just still six, to this seven, day, eight. I can only remember, because what, what did they, was it, not, it wasn't Burlitz. Burlitz was listen and repeat. Yeah. Um, which we did a lot of that, but also there were these exercises where there'd be two people having a conversation. It's like, do you get off early this afternoon? No, I have to work past dinner time. Well, could I meet you outside the library? <laughs> Those are fraught with danger. It's like, that's great if I want to talk to somebody about meeting outside La Biblioteca, you know, but it's like... Yeah, but sometimes there are words that are very... You know, the, the stuff that, that I need. Uh, but it's kind of funny, it just kind of happens. 20-some-odd years ago, Bill, there was a film, it was a foreign film, Italian, and it made a really big splash here in the U.S. of A. It was called Cinema Paradiso. Mm -hmm. And it was, a, I won't bore you with the, what it was the story of, but it was a lovely, lovely movie. It was also as long as a wounded snake mm. and film. But it was an Italian with subtitles. And by the end of that movie, I felt like I knew how to speak Italian. <laughs> you could anticipate, you'd hear what they were saying before the subtitle came up. You basically knew what the characters were saying to each other. I, I know how to curse in Italian. I'm sure you do. But, you know, my grandmother, who, you know, immigrated to this country uh, when she was a, a late teenager, uh, at, right after her marriage, my, my father and all of his brothers and sisters wanted to learn how to speak Italian. And she would say, no, you're an American. You speak English. Talk American. And I remember when I was a teenager asking my grandma to, to teach me some Italian phrases. And Your grandma taught you how to cuss in Italian? No, my uncles and my dad. That's uh, what uncles are for. Yeah, that's what they're for. But my grandmother said the same thing. No, you're an American. You don't speak, you don't speak Italian. You speak English. Uh, it was but, like my family. We were forbidden from speaking Irish. 
You couldn't speak Gaelic? We could, no, and I'm, that was a joke. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, dumb Americans go over there and say, I don't know how to speak Irish. But now, if you and I had a few thousand bucks and a day and a half of time on our hands, we'd go fly to Italy right now. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't have to say a word. I'd get off the airplane, they look at this space, and they immediately start hammering me in Italian. And I'm going, I don't speak Italian. And I don't believe you. They just keep it up. All these women with mustaches are all over you, and you know, the guys with perfect hair, and it's like, well, I it, don't speak Italian. Is it true that speaking Italian also, you've, you've got to not only be able to speak the words, but you also need to know the hand gestures well, and stuff cadence, like that? In cadence. <laughs> there are some things that you say very quickly and some things that you say very slowly. I've joked, you know, I've worked with you for many years, and I've joked, you handcuff Bill Profita, he I cannot can't speak. speak. No, I, I, you, you got to have the hands. You, we all... At, all Italians, even if they're in this country for five generations and don't know a word of Italian, they all speak with their hands. Uh, it's funny about Irish people, though. It's like, uh, again, I, I have some favorite films that are made in Ireland. Uh, one of them is called The Commitments. And the version of The Commitments that we have on Blu-ray has English subtitles, even though they're speaking English throughout the film. But boy, those North Dublin accents, Listen, buddy, you got to plow through those. In London... Half the time you can't understand what the shopkeeper or the cab driver is saying. I mean, what? They are speaking what? the king's English. But to these American ears, you can't understand a thing they're saying. You know what's fun? Is English people imitating Americans mm-hmm. and talking with an American accent? They always go through their nose. What was the TV show that was on for so long? Hugh Laurie? Was it House? Was House, it yes, House. I got to admit, I never watched a single episode of that show. I'd see it on, you know, promos and stuff, and I'd see this this guy that I knew was an English actor, and I'd see him talking to everybody like this. It's like his English, his American accent sucks. Well, it's because all the original tourism to London after World War II was from Honky Land. You know, you, you got the Rust Belt. They had the money and they had the flights. So you get. I mean, I got relatives in Chicago. That the reason. The, it was called honky was because they sound like they're talking through their nose. Really? Is that what oh, it comes from? Oh, God. I always wondered about I that. Just have a, I, I just, understood cracker because, you know, a cracker's pale. And I'm just going to have that. a pimento cheese sandwich and a tab if that's okay. Oh, geez. Yeah. Now you're getting all Wisconsin on me. Yeah, but I mean, Chicago, Detroit, Minneapolis, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, New York, Baltimore. That's who the British were first exposed to. Mm-hmm. They weren't exposed to anybody from Atlanta. For a number of years, mm-hmm. uh, and so they think that we all speak with our our noses stuffed. We're coming up on the second half of Exiles TV today. We appreciate you being with us. We're going to take a brief pause in our second hour. We're going to show how you can help light the way during the COVID crisis. That's so coming up. Stick around. We'll be right back on Exiles TV. Don't go anywhere. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Hi gang, Clarence Bugs here. Cox Cable is upgrading the signal from the Pelican, but to catch us, you're going to have to tune in now to a new number. Acadiana, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Gramercy, Lutcher. Check your guide for details. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9. Happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6. And brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2. As well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Exiles from what you ask, exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Profita, he's Kevin Gallagher, and they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television, 
on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. Hello, guys. It's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Welcome, welcome, and bienvenue. <laughs> Come on in. Welcome to Exiles Buongiorno. TV. Buongiorno. Bill Profita over yonder, and I'm Kevin Gallagher. And uh, as we go into hour two, glad to have you with us this hour. Uh, we have a special guest going to join us in just a few minutes. Uh, Bridget Tate is a lighting specialist. Uh, she's going to talk to us about that. How does one become a lighting specialist? What's the importance of lighting? Believe me, lighting, if you think that this is a nice shot, and that me and Bill look reasonably okay, you can thank lighting for that. Because I'm telling you, if the lighting were not good, we would look like death eating a cracker. Yeah. yeah um, and, we and, ain't this pretty. But we're also going to talk about how you can be part of lighting the way, which is a good way to show. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that's kind of death eating a cracker right there. You want to pull back on that uh, headshot there? How do you feel How's about Cleveland? Cleveland? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm one of those people I see myself in a tight shot on television. I just cringe. Ah, uh, well, get used to it. <laughs> but uh, Bridget will be joining us in just a few minutes. Here's a piece of news. Uh, this is literally just in. Uh, John Bell Edwards and John Schroeder have reached an agreement ending a three-year dispute over Louisiana's unclaimed property money. Now, we had Treasurer Schroeder on with us. Uh, and uh, He mentioned that it was a done deal on the program Tuesday. Yeah. And what was at issue was the governor wanted to take this, a portion of this unclaimed money and put it in the general fund. And the, tre the treasurer has maintained that for years and years and years and years and years, that money belongs to the people it's intended for, mm -hmm. and he is to hold it in safekeeping. So what has happened, uh, Republican Senator Mike Fezzi uh, put a bill together uh, that basically frees up millions for spending uh, as Edward wants, Edwards wants, but keeps the unclaimed property dollars locked up in a trust fund uh, as Schroeder wants. Uh, Mr. Schroeder, Treasurer Schroeder, blocked $32 million in transfers of unclaimed property to uh, spend on operating expenses. The governor sued. Both sides say the lawsuit will now be dismissed with the passage of the legislation. Mm -hmm. So for now, uh, they will be ha they will have to settle uh, the budget by sweeping the budget from all the state agencies. It, it's time for the big broom to come out and sweeping all their allocated funds back. I think if they get out the big broom and they take a really long look, they're going to find that there is still a considerable amount of wasted money in state government. Uh, and there are ways that they can find, as the Jindal administration used to call it, efficiencies. 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 There are ways to cut the budget. And not really hurt anybody. Nobody's much into efficiencies. No. Uh, I don't know the facts and the figures, but I have read that a lot of the efficiencies that were found by the Jindal administration have since been, those those cuts and expenditures have now been refilled mm -hmm. over the last several years. So I, I, feel like Ed, uh, I feel like Ed McMahon to your Johnny Carson, but so have you yes. heard about the Saharan dust cloud? I have, sir. It's, I'll be Ed McMahon today. It's supposed to be here tomorrow. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the Saharan, Saharan dust cloud because that dust cloud across the Atlantic and spreading into the Gulf means there probably won't be any tropical cyclone formation. That's going to, I mean, all, that, all those particles in the air are going to make it much, much harder for tropical cyclones mm -hmm. to form, which is just fine with me. Now, there are going to be some people having some respiratory issues, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the plume is expected to move over uh, the southeast part of the country, which includes 
our area here in southeast Louisiana. Uh, they are saying that the air quality is going to be greatly reduced mm -hmm. as this passes, uh, and it will irritate uh, the lungs of people who have allergies. So what's next in 2020? I, would, I just want to know, is it going to smell like camel farts when it gets here? Well, it's certainly going to look like them. <laughs> <laughs> what's next for 2020? It's funny, some of the memes, the 20, what's next for 2020 memes, have you seen on social media? It's like, what's next? Well, murder hornets. Actually, murder hornets turned out to be nothing, just somebody trying to whip people up and get scared. But uh, They I'm, got them stopped at the border. I'm thinking uh, sniper monkeys. You know, we get some, some trained monkeys with sniper rifles, and we're going to have some serious trouble. Um, well. What else? I mean, this is. Man-eater skeeters. Well, yeah, wait, wait, wait for a big West Nile season. West Nile was off and running, and then we, you know, and we were tracking it like we normally do, but then along came COVID-19, and suddenly nobody cared anymore. <sighs> Same thing with the seasonal flu. Have you heard anything about seasonal flu? We got how, many people have, how many people have died? See, you, you know, in Louisiana, on the, in Louisiana alone, on the average, sometimes between 3,000 and 10,000 people a year can die of seasonal flu. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know what our death number for COVID-19 is, but we certainly are acting like it's a very, very high and alarming number. And I'm, any death is alarming. Any any death is regrettable. But well, when it, it comes from unseen contagions, I mean, we have gotten so jaded about our highway deaths, which is a shame. Yeah, because that's 10, 20, 30,000 a year dying but, highways. But we expect our citizens to kill themselves on the highway. We expect. That's it. okay. Yeah, uh, you know when sort this of. is an unseen pathogen, it's like. If there were a great big measles outbreak, everybody wouldn't be so skittish because, hey, you can see them. You know, they ring the unclean bell and they stay away and off you go. Uh, Maybe put you in the stocks, you know, in public square. Embarrass you. Unclean, I will, unclean. I will, I will humiliate you. I, I snarl at you. I will fart in your general direction. Uh, <laughs> That's we, twice we've said fart this segment. We're, we got we got to clean this show up. What's We're descending with, into the gutter, Bill. What's wrong with fart? Into the gutter. Um, here's some good news. The Tour Eiffel has reopened after a 104-day shutdown due to the coronavirus. Can you practice social distancing in there? Yeah, I mean it's that observation deck's kind of cramped up top, isn't it? Well, the the one way way up, which you don't really go to, is kind of cramped. Uh, but the Jules Verne restaurant is big. Mm -hmm where you can go and order your croque monsieur and your glass of fine French wine. Bill speaks from personal experience. Oh, yeah. It, it, it is one of those great, great views. It, it's, it's like looking over the Grand Ca looking over, out of the Grand Canyon, but it's not just a big hole in the ground. Okay. <laughs> awesome. It's like Karen says, don't you ever want to walk to the edge of the Grand Canyon? I say, no. I've seen it from the air a dozen times. It's a great big ditch there isn't anything to see there nothing grows there he's, he's, nothing lives there you sound like one of my older brothers you can't order a decent meal there we made I mean, a trip to the grand canyon when we were kids drink. we made a trip to the grand canyon when we were kids and the first place that we stopped to just have a good look you know one of these good lookout points and my older brother just goes over okay hole in the ground got it bye what? back now, to the car he went I, I, he had comic I, books in the car. I am equal opportunity. I went to the uh, the ruins in Athens, and Karen's like, "Isn't it wonderful?" I said, "If it was so important, why didn't they fix it back up? It's just laying here with weeds growing all over it, and it stinks." <laughs> but Bill, don't you get a sense of history? All right, as time goes, I, I get a sense of bad architecture that didn't stand up, but it's still there, Bill. Thousands of years it, later. It's all overgrown with weeds and thousands like of years later. If you go later. to the Colosseum in Rome, there's restaurants you can walk through and mm -hmm. see, you know, where they used to hold the people before the gladiators and the lions. And I mean, this is just, it's a big overgrown field with a lot of Doric columns that are just laying all over each other. If they gave a damn, why didn't they fix it up? You talk about the Acropolis? There, yeah, the Acropolis. On, the Acropolis yeah. up there on that hill it's in Athens? It's a dump. It really is. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about Greece on and, another show. And all of Athens, by the way, stinks. I've talked. Yeah, I was going to say I've talked to two or three people who have said Greece was not a favorite place for them. No. But Oopa. right now, quick commercial break. When we come back, Bridget Tate joins us. We're going to talk about lighting the way. How you could be a part 
of Lighting the Way. That's on the way. Stick around. Exiles TV. guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling That's right, the Clarence Bug Show is back, along with the Exiles, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher. We've put the band back together, South Louisiana's talk team, and it's only on the Pelican. 10 a.m. till 12 noon, right here on the Pelican. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Hey, we're back. Exiles TV. So glad to have you with us, and thanks for staying with us. And I told you it'd be a payoff if you stuck with us long enough. You don't get to. You can look at her instead of him and me. Careful. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> joining we, us. Uh, we are in a time of increased sensitivities. Joining us is uh, Bridget Jobert. Did I pronounce that right? Jobert. Yeah, Jobert Tate. Bridget Jobert Tate. Now, Bridget is a lighting specialist, and she may have one of the only lighting blogs I've ever seen. Uh, this little light of mine and uh, we're also we want to talk to you about this effort that you've got going uh, called lighting the way yes so tell us about lighting the way and how we can be a part of it okay so lighting the way is an, an initiative that um, I've put together with capital city lighting Laura Sue uh, events and um, we've just recently partnered with the uh, rocket right radio mm -hmm. to be our media sponsors and what we want to do is we want to say thank you to our healthcare workers and community that has gotten us this far and also it kind of looks like we are diving back into you know we're going to need them a lot um so it's just basically a big hug what you do is you go and buy a light bulb for five dollars four dollars will go to back to um Baton Rouge Emergency Aid Coalition, where they will earmark those funds for Scrub Grub, and that, then they will feed the healthcare workers. So it's supporting the Baton Rouge restaurant industry, and it's feeding the healthcare workers. I mean, that's what we do here in Louisiana. We feed people. It feels good to do that, mm -hmm. it and it's just a big thank you. Like, thanks for thanks for helping us. You know, 
this far. Thanks for taking care of us. Tell me about the bulbs. What, okay. are, the, what are the official bulbs look like? So they're blue LED light bulbs and you can use them in your existing exterior fixtures. And that's also a physical thank you just for people to see like this warm glow of blue in Baton Rouge and know that it means, you know, thank, thank you to the healthcare industry. Well, and you might be lighting the whole street where a physician or a nurse or a respiratory mm -hmm. therapist, you know, is, is on their way home yeah. a, after a long shift and they see all of these blue lights. I love it. That are, would make me so happy. Are we just talking standard bulbs, one like putting their front porch light or, you know, could I get blue floods? Uh, so it is for yeah. my security lights or what it's standard blue bulbs I, I would think that your for your security lights the, the you it would probably negate the security feature if you did blue bulbs I mean I would love I just to want to freak the neighbors out <laughs> <laughs> we want to light we want you to be safe so keep your security bulbs okay but um yeah so it's just a standard bulb we also have the candelabra which are the small base bulbs mm -hmm. and if you go to my lighting blog I'll teach you all about light bulbs okay <laughs> Everything you ever want to know about light bulbs. Uh, what I what I think is 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 interesting about that is that not only are we uh, are we getting the uh, it, it not only we're we getting the the kind of hey thank you visual, mm -hmm. but obviously you you've made a, a big big purchase on these bulbs so you can bring the price down to where for five dollars four of it goes to actually taking care of healthcare workers while they're doing their jobs. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a it's a physical thank you. You know they're getting a good meal, and then um, you know it's they get to see this. Uh, it's a thank you of just it's a hug. And our restaurant industry appreciates the additional business right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So I take it you're gonna go to various restaurants and say I need you to prepare for Our Lady of the Lake today, seventy five meals. Right. And well, the beauty of this is it's a team effort. I I love working with other people. I always have big ideas, but it's hard to often do everything yourself, especially when you're running a business. Um, so we're partnering with the Baton Rouge Emergency Aid Coalition, and they are using these earmarking these funds for a scrub grub who already has it down mm -hmm. pat. So they will take, you know, we're just giving them the money, and then they're taking it, and they're doing all the legwork with working with restaurants and, and feeding them. Scrub grub, which sounds yeah. a lot like a food delivery, but yeah. that's what they do is they deliver medical right right scrub grub they only deliver to people wearing scrubs you right. know the medical community got yeah it, got it and they work with the baton rouge restaurants i i, I need to throw you a, a something that's kind of off script but it's true i i've just been doing some calculus here i and didn't know we had a script well <laughs> we don't i'm trying i'm trying real hard to play nice I, all of my exterior lighting is gas okay I do not have a porch light yeah. or an outdoor light. All my exterior lighting is gas. Gas lanterns. You have no. You have nothing else. So how does your? It seems like that you know gas lanterns don't put off a whole lot of light. We can talk about this later. I feel no, like you no, need they some. Don't. You need some. More they're light there to look there. nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you have something. A can. A can out there. Or do something. not have a can. No recess lighting. No so recess lighting. In no instances floods. like this. I, I, have, I have got. I have got solar LED uplighting floods. Okay. So can I get a blue lens yeah. maybe? Yeah, yeah. We could probably look at doing something like that. But I mean, in instances like this, we could also do um, string lighting, the festoon lighting you see like, you know, in restaurants, outdoor spaces. I like the mm -hmm. name. And you can, um, you know, you could do probably every like third ball blue just to kind of join in the effort. We'll figure it out, Bill. Yeah, we, 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 in, in the subdivision where I live, uh, as, as part of the tenants of the of the uh, contract you have to sign before you're allowed to build a house there, you have to have at least two gas lamps. And so you you live in a fancy restricted neighborhood is what you're trying to tell us. We live under the boot <laughs> of the man who runs our homeowners association. The HOAs, man. But. <laughs> Many of my neighbors are in the same situation. Yeah. All their exterior lighting is um, is gas. Now, a few of them have a little porch light in, as well. Look, Bill, buy a bulb, put it in a lamp, and then put Stick it, it, put in, it the in the window, and, you know, 
One if by land, two if by sea. We don't have any windows that face the street. Our house is built around a courtyard. I'm I have, sorry. I'm just a problem for you. I have some more questions. I want to find out how does one become a lighting specialist. Yeah. And that is what our guest Bridget Tate is. We're going to talk with her more when Exiles TV returns in just a moment. John Schroeder, encouraging you to visit latreasury.com to search for your unclaimed property money. During this pandemic, we've returned money to businesses, local governments, and people across Louisiana. New Orleans Habitat for Humanity found unclaimed property with the Louisiana Treasury. Audubon Nature Institute has unclaimed property. I found unclaimed property with the Louisiana Department of Treasury. We still have over $800 million. This is your money. Claim it. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Experience what the Baton Rouge International School can offer your children. Now welcoming displaced students for short and long-term stability. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Clarence Bug Show. Yeah. I'm back on the air. That's right, 10 a.m. until 12 noon, Monday and Wednesday, and we replay it Monday and Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. to midnight. Check us out online. You can watch it live at pelicansportstv.com, or better yet, why don't you just download the Pelican Broadcasting app? That way you can take it with you anywhere you go. That's right, the Clarence Bug Show. Tell you what. Oh, wait, got to run. Got to go. Bye. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Cantea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Cantea, your Italian dining will change forever. to have you along with us. We were talking about lighting the way uh, with Bridget Jobert Tate. Uh, and, and you can actually uh, buy one of these low power usage blue LED lights for mm -hmm. five bucks, put it in your outside light, and $4 of that goes to the Baton Rouge Emergency Coalition, and they will feed emergency workers, you know, healthcare workers at their workplace with, the, with that money, and that's a, a very good cause. But 
we are now interested in lighting designer. If you've ever built a house, if you've ever had that pleasure, your, uh, your, your builder, your architect are gonna say, okay, you've got a lighting allowance of $5,000. And then you say, okay, good. What do you do? He says, no, you're gonna have to go and meet with a lighting designer and a showroom and, tell and decide what, <laughs> what you want. So tell me about being a lighting designer. How do you get into that? How do you, how do you get started as a lighting specialist? Well, I just kind of fell into it, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and I started working at a local lighting boutique uh, about seven years ago. Um, and there's a lot of different aspects to lighting design. You have your decorative, uh, you know, making sure everything looks good together. Mm -hmm. And then, the whole aspect of lights and like how bright you want it like right now we don't have any real overhead light over us because then that would cast shadows mm -hmm. so you know you want to take into account that and make sure everything's kind of lighting our face from all directions right um so there's you know the whole led tech technical aspect so just for me just learning on the job and working with architects and you know doing commercial projects really kind of threw me into I needed to learn more than just how to make a house pretty I had to really learn about um, you know LEDs and color temperature lumens and all, all all the stuff that comes along with that so just doing it that's how I learned about it and then I went out on my own and opened my own business about a year ago in August it'll be one year Congratulations! And thanks um, very exciting, but you know, I have a dedicated following of people that like to work with me. I, I'm very um, organized. I help keep the business, the the builder's job very easy. They just send their client into me, and I kind of take over um, that whole aspect. Yeah, you recently did uh, the office of a friend of ours, an attorney, uh, and the first thing I noticed when I walked into his office after you'd finished the job was there's no buzz in this room anymore. Yeah. I mean, and his room had a profound fluorescent light yeah. buzz. Yeah, we, we get, got rid of that. I mean, the thing with fluorescence, too, sometimes it takes a while for them to kick in. Mm -hmm. You get different bulbs that are all different colors. It looks bad. Fluorescent light's just ugly, and it, yeah. people tend to look bad under it, too. Yeah. Well, and the thing about, you know, the, the law office that you redesigned the lighting, you made one mistake. What's that? You can still see him. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Talk, let's talk a little bit about LED because it does seem to be the, the thing. Uh, not too long ago, I purchased my first LED fixture. I've, I've started using LED bulbs in, yeah. in devices at the house, but I recently purchased my first fixture that was the LEDs are in it. Yeah. You throw and you never replace them. Yeah. They said, yeah, and I said, well, I asked the guy I bought it from, well, I will, you know, how long will this last? He says, probably rated at about 20 years. I'm like, really? The, the LEDs will last 20 years? This guy said probably the ballast inside that fixture will die before the LEDs do. That's a breakthrough because they used to be kind of not ready for prime time. Yeah. I mean, usually they have a warranty. It's not, a, I wouldn't say there's a 20 year warranty, but that's probably accurate um, that they will last that long. But there's usually like a five or 10 year warranty. And what happens is inside of that fixture, there's all these little diodes. Mm -hmm. um, and that is what puts out the light. So I do get that question a lot. Like, well, where's the bulb? Well, what, what's, how does, where's the bulb? And I'm like, it's a, there's no bulb. It's just a, a you know, a whole thing of little these little dots that put out LED, um, you know, light. LED, by the way, stands for lighted light electronic light emitting, light emitting diode. diode. Thank you. Light <laughs> emitting oh, yeah. diode. I, I've been trying to change over uh, the bulbs in our home, and I really do like the way the warm white LEDs mm -hmm. look like in lamps and floor fixtures. Yeah. I haven't done the cans yet. The floods. Uh, because you need to find the dimmable ones. Yes. To do that. And that they're a lot. They're a lot more readily available now. I think at first when they started coming out, that was um, getting an LED bulb that was dimmable was a little bit harder or more expensive. And now they're just kind of making that standard. Well, and what I have noticed is uh, I have uh, a couple of lamps that burn every night for seven or eight hours. Mm -hmm. I have a uh, table lamp out on my courtyard that I have on a uh, timer. I like to see lighting out there, you know, uh, from dusk to well into the night. And I have noticed that my electric bill has dropped 
about yeah. 20 bucks a month just yeah. because of the leds i'm right. using in lamps i will tell you that the can lights the older can lights uh, recessed cans that people use those put out so much heat um, mm -hmm. not only are you going to if you change over to like a, a recessed trim that's a retrofit which is super easy call me if you need help um, then you're gonna save on energy consumption and you're gonna your AC isn't gonna be working as hard so that's gonna save electricity there as well I remember doing an explanation on it you have got 460 watt and two 100 watt bulbs burning right by yeah. the thermostat mm -hmm. You're wondering why the air conditioning is huffing and puffing? Turn those off. Yeah. Okay, now a lot of cans, people have got an incandescent bulb in them. Right. Or perhaps they've got a fluorescent bulb in them, but they're like maybe a 75 watt, you yeah. know. Can you replace that with an LED lamp? Yes. And get, the, and get similar savings? Oh, yeah. So, so what happens is in those cans, so the can, what a can is made up of is there's a housing unit in your attic, which looks like a bucket. Yep. Okay. And then there's a trim and then there's a, a bulb of some sort inside mm -hmm. of it. So what you would do is the housing unit stays, that trim comes out. Um, it's something a lot of people, if you're handy, you can do it yourself. And you just get a retrofit trim kit that is the trim and the LED bulb, which are really diodes, mm -hmm. all in one. And it just pops right in. There's a um, attachment where it has like a attachment to screw in like a light bulb that powers that trim kit. It's super easy. Do you have those at Capital City Light? Yes, I do. Marvelous. Well, I I have always I'm, I'm fascinated. Uh, we've built two houses from scratch, and, and I built one when I was single. And walking through a lighting showroom with somebody who knows what they're doing, that you oh I love this fixture, and they go mm, no look at this one you know because you know if you go in with like your plans and all that you're actually having to do some math mm -hmm. uh, has the cost of lighting changed much I, I can remember some fixtures that I thought they were very nice but mm -hmm. they weren't you know they weren't mm -hmm. going in Versailles and you know you look at the tag and it's like Seven, $780 <laughs> and it's like, I just want to be able to see the food I'm eating. <laughs> what, what's happening with pricing? I mean, it's all over the board. I mean, if you want, you know, I work with people that have have a $20,000 lighting budget and I work with people that have a $3,000 lighting budget. It's all achievable. Um, I think the more, the more expensive fixtures are, they all have custom finishes. Um, you know, they're really nice. They're, you know, I... I want you to buy them, but I'll help you if you need something <laughs> less expensive. What, what about lighting the room for dual purposes? Like in, in our den where we spend most of our time, you know, in front of the tube and everything, um, when it's just Marianne and I, mm -hmm. we prefer to light the room with lamps. Yeah. And we've got some LED lights in conventional fixtures and everything, but we also have cans in the ceiling and a ceiling fan with lights in it. Mm -hmm. and. We tend to have, when we have company over, we tend to use the overhead lighting instead of the lamps because the room is, frankly, a little a little like a cave when the lamps are on. Yeah. I mean, what kind of, can, can you properly use lamps as opposed to fixtures in order to I mean, set two moods in a room? Well, lamps, are, lamps are, provide more of like an ambiance. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can have a desk lamp that is task lighting, but I love lamps in a room because it adds an extra layer. I just think of it as, at, it's like almost a, it is a decorative layer. Um, and so, like we have cans, they're all wired on different switches. So, depending on, you could, I mean, I would think if you're having a quaint party, um, you might just have your lamps on and maybe like one can, I wouldn't have them all wired on the same thing. Maybe like a set of cans, like highlighting the, the art on your, um, by your fireplace, or you could always add sconces. That's kind of what we do. So if we don't have all the cans going in the ceiling, we'll just have, we have some sconces on the wall and we have all the, all the oh, lamps on. I just remembered another question. I uh, made a mental note. How do LEDs work with rheostats, dimmer switches? Um, so, like that's an, also another big advance because it used to be that you had to get the right dimmer to go with this specific brand yes. of uh, LED. And it's still, some things are still like that, but for the most part, a lot of um, LED lights work with any dimmer. Um, but, I mean, I can help you with that. The too. package will say dimmable. 
You're seeing that more and more dimmable, right now. But when you buy the fixture or the, well, the it, bulb. It yeah. will say dimmable, um, but sometimes if it's not dimmable, then you can't dim it, and it'll create that strobe effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Seizure inducing. Yeah. <laughs> so, but sometimes you need there's a, the right dimmer that goes with the light. What a wealth of information. Before we let you go, let's... Hit me with the hard questions today. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we save that for the second interview. Um, where can people reach you if they need some help with lighting at their home, if they want to do some changes? I, I feel like we ought to be able to get them in touch with you. How can they reach you? So, um, well, check out my website. Uh, it's www.capitalcitylighting.com. Uh, we're located off of Industriplex on Exchequer, 6951 Exchequer. And you can email me at Bridget, B-R-I-D-G-E-T, at CapitalCityLighting.com. And if people would like to buy a $5 bulb for Lighting, lighting the Way, the way mm -hmm. uh, where do they go for that? Go to LightingTheWayBR.com, and there will be a link where you can purchase the bulb. All right. Well, thank you. It has been a pleasure. I'll go there this afternoon you, and get that done. Having you with us, a wealth of information. <laughs> Thanks and, for having me. And we certainly wish you a lot of luck uh, with Lighting the Way and with your business, which is still relatively new. Yeah. So good for you, and, and thanks for being with us. We're going to take a brief break. We'll be back with more on Exiles TV. Don't go away. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable independent with nationwide buying power. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling That's right, the Clarence Bug Show is back, along with the Exiles, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher. We put the band back together, South Louisiana's talk team, and it's only on the Pelican. 10 a.m. till 12 noon, right here on the Pelican. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Sometimes life is wonderful, and sometimes it's not. Cherish the good, but always be prepared for life's challenges. At Private Healthcare, we provide the peace of mind you deserve. With Private Healthcare, you'll get the coverage you want and healthcare you need. If your employer doesn't supply healthcare coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private health care is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. When life comes at you unexpectedly, you need to be ready, and health insurance is your financial safety net. Health insurance has never been so easy and affordable. If you're looking for health coverage at the best price and your annual household income is $35,000 or more, call the number on the screen now and speak with a live health care consultant. Don't wait. Get the coverage you need now. Hello, guys. It's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Hey, welcome.
Welcome back. It's Exiles TV. Bill Perfita sits over yonder, and I'm Kevin Gallagher. I'm glad to have you with me. Oh, Bill! Yeah. Checking a look at some of the things going on in the world. You know, we now live in the age of let's rewrite everything, let's redo everything, let's change the name of everything. Because after all, we wouldn't want to offend anybody, now would we? This from the Tennessean.com, which is a, 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 a local news magazine in the great, the great state of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. The Dixie Chicks have now, in order to show their woke dewokeness and their virtue signaling, have changed their name to The Chicks. <sighs> yeah. Excuse me. Are they still around? The, the Dixie Chicks. That little chubby one, is she still around? The, I thought the Dixie Chicks kind of, you know, crapped in their own nest when they insulted President Bush mm -hmm. that many years ago. I had no idea they were even still around. But isn't, isn't Chicks demeaning to women? I know my wife yeah. doesn't like being called a chick. I don't know any women who enjoy being called a chick. So, girls, keep working on that name. You're not quite woke to woke enough. Well, nah, don't bother. You're, everybody's over you. I'm tired of people virtue signaling. You know, people out of nowhere are getting a little publicity by going, well, we're not going to do this anymore, or we're not going to do that anymore, or this is going to be your new policy. And they're like, well, congratulations on finally waking up and smelling the coffee. I'm going to have to... Uh I'm going to have to get my sign. I, I think it's in the garage. I have a very nicely done sign that's about this big so I can stick it in a pocket and I can pull it out. And it says, I'm sorry. Obviously, you've mistaken me for someone who actually gives a crap. Yeah. Does it actually use the word crap? Because I can think of another no, word. No, no, it, it, it doesn't use the word crap. Um, here's another headline that just some of these. Uh, just, you just read the headlines alone and just seethe. Governor Andrew Cuomo, Cuomo, the governor of New York, says tearing down monuments is a healthy expression of one's feeling. Is Destruction of public property is a healthy expression of one's feelings. Hey, handy baby, if your wife really, really irritates the hell out of you, is, is, uh, is knocking her around the room a healthy expression of your feelings? And there are people that are saying, well, this, guy, this guy'd make a fine president. President of what? The Shriners? No, that's an insult to Shriners. You know what? I, I, I think you should be free to say that statue of Pickett, uh, Andrew Jackson. I mean, he, he was a slave owner. Uh, that offends me. I think you should be free to say that. I think you should be free to say, I'd like to have a discussion with whoever owns it, the city or the state or whatever, about how a lot of people would think that's offensive. I think you should be free to call for that meeting. You are not free to just tie a rope around it and tie it to the back of your Jeep and pull it down. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is actual physical property that belongs to some entity and we don't get to do that in this society. I, I have lived where some neighbors had some houses that had some of the ugliest damn things in front of their house. And I mean, it, 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 it made us look like the next door neighbor to the bazaar at Calcutta. But it, I did not feel free to go and remove or to damage their stuff. And while I agree that we got some issues in this country when it comes to race. I get that. But I think you lose your message, you lose your traction when you just say, because I don't like it, or the mob with me doesn't like it, we are going to rip it off its moorings and destroy it. It is not yours. When did we become a nation where you were free from ever being offended? I never saw that in the Constitution. Bill, I got another one to share with you. You're going to love this. Mm -hmm. Seattle, Washington. Cal Anderson Park in Washington State. Scene from the 1950s is playing out right now, only in reverse. There's an entire section of Cal Anderson Park near Seattle, Washington, that has been designated as a blackout zone, meaning only black people are allowed in the park. Only black people. The, uh, How's that working for They feel like they need to create a place where black people feel safe. Segregation. Blacks only. 
Does it make a difference who's putting up the sign that says blacks only? Ah. Do you remember when people used to march and they used to have street demonstrations because they weren't allowed to sit at a lunch counter? And now we're saying this part of the park is for black people only? What the hell is wrong with us? We are losing our collective minds in this country. Uh, there was a talk show host years ago. I don't know what's ever become of him, but he used to be on in the Baton Rouge area, Michael Savage. Mm -hmm. Michael Savage wrote a book, and he, he repeats this phrase a lot. Liberalism is a mental disease. It's a mental disorder. And there are times when I really, really agree with him. Well, I think some of the manifest manifestations of it are. Yes. Some uh, of the, man, the, you know, I mean, the whole liberalism in, in itself, I, I think, is mostly benevolent. But people get carried away with their policies. Well, telling people that this part of the park is for black people only. What's the, do, you, do you tell the black people, I'm sorry, you got to go to that park, that's your part, go there? Well, no, you can't do that. <laughs> but you can tell the white people, you can't, you can't come in here. Well, you know, it, sometimes I think we are giving these blatant stupidities more time than they're due. Uh, this is something a little closer to home. And I don't think it's a, I don't think it's an accident of the timing with this, but the Metro Council is going to consider a five million dollar settlement in the civil suit against the city filed on behalf of Alton Sterling's five children. Um, the measure has been introduced by Councilwoman Shauna Banks, and it was introduced at the last council meeting, which, like all meetings, is a virtual meeting. Uh, at this point, and uh, it should come to a vote on the 26th of August when officials hope the public would be able to offer their comments in, in person. Mm -hmm. Now, if this is approved, the measure would authorize the parish attorney's office to offer the settlement to the Sterling family with dollars appropriated from the city parish insurance reserve funds. And again, here's the linkage. Seeing what happened to George Floyd reminded me so much of what happened to Alan Sterling, according to Councilwoman Banks. This needs to be settled now and not be passed along to the next council administration. Uh, the Sterling family's wrongful death lawsuit alleged that the, the shooting uh, was an example of excessive force. Uh, I'm it, sorry, I do not equate the Alton Sterling case with George Floyd. No, but at all there there are people in politics that would seek to do that uh the lawsuit was filed in 2017 trial is not scheduled until march of next year now attorneys for both sides agreed to participate in mediation uh but the mediator's proposal did not get enough votes before the metro council to pass okay uh i i as a matter of public policy, here's what I will say. I don't think the city parish should ever settle a lawsuit for more than $10,000. This is our money. We are self-insured. Mm -hmm. I think that if the Sterling children want their day in court, they should have it. I think it's ill-advised to offer settlements or go to mediation before that court date. I think it weakens your position. Now, does anybody think that the city is going to vigorously defend its position? Or is this going to end up being a cupcake trial? Cupcake trial. I wouldn't be so sure about that. And I'll tell you why. There are a lot of people. I'm basing my answer on how quickly they rolled over for Black Lives Matter in 2016 during the demonstrations. Yeah, but you weren't, you weren't talking about a $5 million settlement. No. You were talking about shut up and get back in the truck. But it was a little over a million dollars. Yeah. And they wrote him a check. But as Councilman Trey Welsh says, he believes the law should, should proceed to trial to allow for a full accounting of the case to be aired out in public. He also said there are legal questions to be answered on whether the $5 billion proposal exceeds potential caps 
on city parish payouts. And here's the other thing. Do you know, and this is, this is a, a harsh reality a lot of people don't want to address. Do you know in a wrongful death or an accidental death or a negligent death lawsuit how they evaluate what the award would be? I don't know the mechanism, no, sir. Mechanism's pretty simple. Let's say Kevin is making three quarters of a million a year with his beautiful voice, and he has three kids that are all pre-college age, and he is negligently taken from this planet, and now we're at trial, then you base what those kids are going to get based on the fact that Kevin probably had 20 good working years. Mm -hmm. So you take that 750K, okay. and you multiply it by 20, and that's where you start looking at your award. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, there are people whose children die as infants, and they sue the hospital, and they get an award, and they, they go crazy, they're hysterical, because if there's no you know, deliberate negligence, their award might be 20 grand because that kid had not shown any potential for monetary value yet. Understood. So here's the thing. You think Alton Sterling was making 150 G's selling CDs outside the Quickie Mart? Somehow I'm thinking maybe not that much money. How on earth do you come up with a $5 million evaluation? I think you pull a huge, huge number out of your butt and then you hope that, you know, you can get something close to that as the bargaining goes down. Not to mention the fact that if the, the, resu if the arrest hadn't gone south, he would have been going back to prison. Yep. Time Felon for in possession, he would have been going back. Yeah. Third time. Yeah. Third time felon in possession of a firearm, it would have been prison for sure for Mr. Sterling. Prison, I think, preferable to death. But Quick break. Exiles TV returns in a moment. Hi, gang. Clarence Bugs here. Cox Cable is upgrading the signal from the Pelican, but to catch us, you're going to have to tune in now to a new number. Acadiana, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Gramercy, Lutcher. Check your guide for details. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Clarence Bug Show. Yeah, I'm back on the air. That's right, 10 a.m. until 12 noon, Monday and Wednesday, and we replay it Monday and Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. to midnight. Check us out online. You can watch it live at pelicansportstv.com, or better yet, why don't you just download the Pelican Broadcasting app? That way you can take it with you anywhere you go. That's right, the Clarence Bug Show. Tell you what. Oh, wait, got to run. Got to go. Bye. Welcome back. 
back to Exiles TV. Hey, um, lots of things in the news today, uh, but the weather is going to be an issue somewhere in our viewing area. Uh, they are looking at another p uh, potential series of storm cells, like we had yesterday, that will rise up west of Lafayette and then go to the northeast very, very quickly, impacting Baton Rouge and um, the Florida parishes, Livingston Parish, uh, and then another group that will rise up and impact the Homa Thibodeau area and uh, St. St. James and St. Charles and all the way into Orleans and Jefferson and St. Bernard, you may be getting warnings throughout the day. Uh, make sure that if you have a weather radio, it's on and loud, make sure that your phone will accept emergency notifications. And you'll know when it happens, but uh, this is one of these days we have to be kind of careful around the weather. Hey, we hope you'll join us uh, tomorrow morning live for the uh, the Exiles podcast. Uh, we'll be on Facebook Live uh, just a few minutes after 8 a.m. And uh, we'll explore the question, can a man named Rowdy become a new member of the Baton Rouge Metro Council? Ro Rowdy Godet, who put in some time working in the mayor president's office, is running for Metro Council. In District 3, Chandler he's, Loop is tapped out, timed out, so Rowdy is running. Rowdy is a friend of the Exiles, and he'll be joining us for the podcast tomorrow to talk about his philosophy for representing that district. Well, and if great hair is a winner, like you, he has great hair. He has awesome hair. He has awesome hair. He does. So I uh, hope you'll join us. That is at La Divina. And by the way, La Divina is a great place to grab some breakfast. So if you want to come by and, uh, and be part of the uh, podcast as we do it live, uh, come and see us. Enjoy Love a cup of coffee. Love to have you. Love some to have delicious you there. eggs and sausage. Man, they make biscuits that make you want to slap your mother. It's incredible. Good stuff all the way around. But anyway, uh, beware. Keep a weather eye out, actually, uh, for the rest of this week, all the way until Saturday. Yeah, these uh, afternoon showers are going to be part yeah, of the day. Yeah, some of them can be very, very, very vicious. Uh, we look forward to having you join us on The Morning Exiles Facebook Live page tomorrow morning for our podcast. And then we'll be right back here in these two chairs, God willing, on Tuesday. So until we meet again, stay well, try to have a little fun, and we will be back. And wear your mask. Kidding. God bless. Now you wear your mask. Bye-bye. I'll wear my mask. Take care, everybody.